this year. Once again, joined this team halfway through the year, led the most lap of the NASCAR All-Pro Series uh, uh, this year. Looks like his car is slipping just a little bit there, Eddie. And once again, everybody's starting to slip a little bit off of, off of turn four. Ernie Elliott Motors in that car. And really, uh, Ernie's, I mean, this is kind of a team car uh, motor-wise. Uh, Actually, Ernie Elliott is building the motors for the 97 car. It's a Frankie Grill car. They won four poles this year, and they won twice on the All-Pro circuit this year. So, uh, obviously, that uh, Elliott motor is uh, is doing its job today. Yeah, there was there's no shortage of motors. Uh, Lonnie Rush was in the, the – his backup car was, was actually one that uh, – Right. Uh, Lonnie Rush was driving. He had the same power plan, and he had commented that he said motor was not a problem this weekend. They had plenty of it. A lot of Frankie Grill race cars out here too. And I mean, it's a good race car. Yeah, it really is, and it's it's been a choice of a lot of uh, of the top names uh, here of late. And uh, suddenly, uh, Rich is maybe getting a little anxious here against uh, Freddie Query. That's the six car Freddie Query, the five car Rich Bickle, both sponsored by Terminal Trucking and. Both of these guys, veterans of the Snowball Derby, as is the blue car right behind of Jody Ridley. Ridley, of course, uh, a winner on the NASCAR Winston Cup circuit years gone by and has been there from time to time. I remember when Bill Elliott was injured. Uh, Jody uh, filled in a couple of races for Elliott. And uh, take a look at this. Ridley's starting to find out, is there a second groove? Oh, my goodness, there might be. Yep. As uh, Rich Bickle gets uh, held down to the low part of the racetrack, Bickle's got to decide now, do I fight with Jody on this deal and use up what little bit of tires I have, or do I let him go and wait to get my tires again? What do you do? Well, I, I think you make him earn it. I, I don't think you just give because, uh, you know, it, it's it's just too tough to get that position back. So he's going to give him room, but he's not going to just give him the space. Looks like they almost got together right now. Rich pulls right back under him again. He's making him earn it. Yeah, yeah. and it looked like uh, maybe Judy was waving out the window there at, uh, at Bickle. <laughs> I don't know what exactly he was doing, but I can assure you that uh, those hand signals do work from time to time. And uh, looked like uh, it may not have won him the position, but uh, nevertheless, Judy Ridley slides around up into that fourth spot. You know, give me a race car I can work with. I think maybe ought to be Jody's motto because that's what he does with it. He works with it, and that's what you've got to do if you want to finish one of these deals. Uh, he, he can do this in his sleep. He's been doing it so long. I mean, he's one of the best there is, especially well, at these long races. And it, it looks like uh, he's going to take Freddie along with him. And again, these two cars, whoa, almost get together. Whoa. The six and the five of Rich Bickle and Freddie Query almost got together right there, and that would have been disaster for both of them. And I think both of them realized right now, Eddie, how bad those tires actually are. Yeah, absolutely. They, uh, oh, there they go again. They're going to do some side and side, but they're going to give each other plenty of room. John Crow gets up under him. Again, John a couple of laps down uh, to the leader right now, who is Jeff Purvis. Ron Barfield uh, runs in the second spot. And again, we're watching. Uh, yeah, but you know, earlier they said about John, he only had to finish 19th or better to move up another spot in the points, and there aren't but about that many cars left. Right, and so, we're looking, uh, looking also there at the 37 car of Larry Raines. And Raines' car has been real consistent this afternoon. He's driven a real heads-up race. But this guy right here, yeah, right now, he's, range, doing he's, the, he's doing the job, and he's in danger of getting lapped by yeah. the leader as Jeff Purvis gets right up under him at the start-finish line. Jeff's going to move around him, I think, right here in turns uh, one and two as he has his sight set on the next lap car, Tracy Goodson, which is coming up right in front of Jeff Purvis. But again, Larry Rain's doing a nice job. I want to comment that, that uh, he's, had, he's had a good show Absolutely. out of this afternoon. Absolutely. Tracy Goodson in the lap traffic, and, and Purvis is only two cars away from putting the fifth place car a lap down. He is uh, he is not far from putting uh, the fifth and the fourth place car a lap down. And I'm trying to figure, he's about a half a lap ahead of the uh, second place car right now. Purvis yeah. is just Jeff Purvis there rail. in the white car, folks, right behind Tracy Goodson, the local Pensacola driver here. Uh, Tracy's working right down below. But, but Purvis right now is almost getting ready to lap uh, the sixth car of Freddie Query. Almost three by three, or excuse me, three abreast going into turns three and Boy, four I there. Might. Ridley uh, brings it back out. Let's... Uh, We'll keep the track of the action up here as Purvis once again has to back off of uh, Tracy Goodson. There you see Jody Ridley. Let's go down to the pits once again with Mark, uh, Mark Allen. Well, fellas, as we talked earlier in the race, Jody Ridley knows how to save his tires. He's up to third place now. I asked him before the race, I said, when's the last time you went through an entire season without a win? He stood there and he scratched his head. 
I said, was it the 1970s? He said, no, nah, I won in that decade. I said, how about the 1960s? He said, hey, I just started racing then. He said, it's got to be the 60s. That's how long it's been since Jody Ridley has gone an entire year without winning. This is his last chance to win one in 1995. Wow, did you see what I, I and, and folks, you know, it's too bad that we can't show you 12 cameras at once, but we're just talking about Larry Raines. We're watching Jody Ridley right now. We're just talking about uh, Larry Raines. He was almost in the parking lot. <laughs> and he saved it up there. If the there's top. an award for the save of the race, yeah, he, gets he it. just Larry, got it. Larry Raines gets it for saving. Uh, Back up front with Jeff Purvis. Purvis is, uh, he had to back off of trying to pass the fourth and fifth guy here a few minutes ago, but he's not going to back off much longer. He's coming up on Rich Bickle right now. And if you're a Bickle, you're going, hey, I can't afford to lose this race car trying to mirror drive Jeff Purvis right or wrong. You're, you're absolutely right. I mean, he's going to do everything in his power to stay in front of him. I mean, it's just, because getting your lap back is there's just the, too there's tough. The save of the race award goes to That's that guy. Larry, he saved it up here in turns one and two, and I, I never believed he could have done it. Anyway, Larry Raines is uh, doing a good job of uh, keeping it together down there. Jeff Perm is trying to make a move up on the uh, fourth place car of Rich Bickle. We're watching Larry Raines again in the 37 car. He now is coming around Freddie Query, or trying to get around Freddie Query. Both terminal trucking cars are hurting for tires. They need a caution, and they need it pretty soon. The only guy that doesn't want to see a caution right now is the leader. Jeff, I, he is on a rail. He doesn't want to see it, but you're right. Right now, we well, you know one terminal trucking car uh, is down a lap, and the other one's about to go. And uh, 97, that's Ron Barfield, and uh, he's holding on to that second spot there. I tell you what, I'm impressed with what Barfield's done earlier in this race. He was real anxious. I mean, you saw him behind the wheel in a couple of incidents. He was right there close to being in the middle of those incidents. What's happened is, is that he's got his composure back, and he's holding that second spot, and he's doing it because he started thinking instead of acting. You know, he started letting, you know, running his race and running it with his car. And uh, Bron Barfield's doing a great job this afternoon. Yeah. 250 laps complete. And I don't know how many green flag that is, Eddie, but uh, that's got to be the longest run. This is the longest green flag run that we've had. But uh, it certainly hasn't bothered Jeff Purvis. Absolutely. It's, uh, it, it's going to make it tough, you know, right now for the guys that have been fighting their race cars. Uh, this, yeah, we got another car getting loose up there, but I tell you, it, it makes it tough right now. These long greens when your car isn't right and you need tires, it's, uh, they're, they're emptying their drink bottles in the car right now. Yeah, you bet. Ron Barfield moving around Hal Goodson. Goodson, uh, again, having a, another great year in the All-Pro Series. Uh, NASCAR's All-Pro Series will be going back to that again next year. Talked about being able to run some of the Hooters races as well. And uh, Ron Barfield is, uh, again, doing a great job up front, holds down the second spot. You know, I'm, I'm 70 laps from the end here, Eddie. I, I mean, i got to have a set of tires. One more set of tires should make the difference for me the rest of the way if we got green flag, right? Absolutely. Ab the, 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 this is the window. It's open. The window is open, and, and you could go the distance. And, uh, you know, anything's possible. I'm, I'm impressed with Barfield because he hasn't gained on purpose, but he hasn't lost. And I imagine if you had a watch on both of them, they're, pr they're pretty consistent. And, a caution to make this thing real interesting. Yeah, give a call to Tracy Goodson. That's who we're watching right here. Tracy is, uh, has had a great afternoon so far. Uh, has had a little bit of uh, confrontation, as you can tell, with uh, uh, you know the right side of his car. But Tracy Goodson has done a great job. Has gotten himself all the way up into the fifth spot. And again, not taking anything away from Tracy, but certainly where you got those tires sequence-wise right now has probably got a whole lot to do with where you stand overall in this field, right? Yeah, there's a lot of note-taking going on to figure out who got tires when and, and a lot of calculation going on. All right, if we get another caution, let's play a little what-if now. Okay. We get another caution, are we going to take four tires? I mean, if you're one of the top six guys, can you afford to take four tires, or is that what you've got to do to be able to last the rest of the race? Yeah, and, and I think a lot of it's uh, your crew. You know, right now, it's your crew is going to help you right now because it doesn't take long to go a lap down here. So if you can get in and out, you'd, uh, you'd, you'd like to have four. 
All right, Doug Rice in the pits, what you got for us? Pat, just Pat we just checked in with the crew chief on the Ron Barfield team, and they say he is not complaining at all about the car, but he is good to go the rest of the way for gas and tires. So for Ron Barfield, he looks like uh, he's cleaning green for the rest of the way. And as far as the uh, number six car is concerned, 